Get more ways to play on every sport. Baseball, golf, and Canadian football are still in full swing because it's the summertime, baby. Mm. So get involved. The action always starts at Sports Interaction. It's Canada's Sportsbook. Bet on the game before it starts, live and play, or use one of the many prop bets that we always talk about on the show. Doing it right since 97, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, easy to play, and cash out. Join now and see that all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Ryan McDonough traded to Nashville for Philip Myers or Philippe Myers, depending upon who... Is saying the name? It's spelled Philippe. It is spelled Philippe, Philippe, and I prefer Philippe. It sounds happier. Um, his name. Yeah. Philippe will probably be li- uh, bought out by the Lightning, and it gives Tampa a cap credit because uh, they'll be over. I believe that um, uh, uh, they are one of the teams, one of the 14 teams, 14 NHL teams have been dinged for overages uh, officially. The NHL has reached out to them. Uh, the Lightning are absolutely one of them, and this is going to help them kind of alleviate some of the cap pressure, obviously, with McDonough's contract done, but also with the uh, with, with the Myers buyout, it gives them something like, I don't know, six, seven hundred grand or something to work with well, this year. There were there were reports from, I don't remember if it was Freege or Dragger, um, that the Lightning actually don't intend on buying him out. Is that right? But... I mean, teams can. It's probably what they just say. Me when I lie. Like it. It can be. It could be them bluffing. Actually, it's interesting. Maybe they don't. So we got Vancouver is one point two five million over Montreal one point one, St. Louis one point one, Edmonton, Dallas, Florida, L.A., Philly, Islander, Chicago, Toronto, Carolina, Washington, Colorado. So no, they do not. Wow, I'm wrong. But whatever. <laughs> the other day is we know Tampa's tight against the cap. This gives them an opportunity. Maybe they're not going to buy him out, but maybe they could. And well, this is the maybe, maybe that's what it is. It's the option. He's a good player um, in need of uh, you know a little bit of reclamation, perhaps a little bit overpaid. He actually ended this past season with the Toronto Marlies. Um, yes, he did. He as was part of a, a sort of future considerations deal that what? they did with the Preds, and they've done this a couple times where the Leafs and Preds have exchanged like an NHL player for a guy on an AHL contract mm-hmm. where they were able to make an AHL trade and an NHL trade. And it's just, it's all very like piddly and minor. I feel like we thing. never find out about future considerations. Cause it's usually nothing. You're not going to follow yeah, up. On and they, they never really come back around and are like, all right, we want a second. Now, if, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, and this was part of the Eric Lindros trade tree. Uh, one of the things that, Calgary got in exchange for Theron Fleury when they traded him to the Colorado Avalanche was future considerations. Oh, the future considerations ended up being uh, a first round pick named Robin Regeer. Wow. Why, how did they get a first out of it? It's Theron freaking Fleury. It, it's, yeah, but why was it delayed until futures? Because I think the reason for that, I don't know this. This is just my theory is these days we're obsessed with conditional draft picks. I think back then that wasn't really a thing. So they just called it future considerations. Right. But it was kind of like, if this happens, he you know, also could have been future. injured and you can't trade injured players. Maybe Theron it was Fleury? that. No, he was extremely good for not Theron and Fleury. Robin Regeer could have been injured. Oh, I don't maybe know. he had like an injury or something. And oh, he's, you can't trade yeah. guys on the injured list. You never know. I right? don't know. It's, it's just one of the only times I remember future considerations actually being a thing. I'm just looking up here at uh, Philippe Meyer's buyout implications. So puck PD has got uh, the, the buyout calculator this coming season, it would give you a cap savings of 616000 but then the following year, you would have a, a penalty of 633 And I wonder if Philip Myers, um, Philip Myers could be a, uh, a thing where they turn around and trade him to another team, too. Like, there could be other yep. teams. I just gave you 14 teams that could use some cap relief. Uh, with a buyout like this, maybe that, maybe that helps. Well, when the Leafs got him for the Marlies, that's what I thought they were trying to do. Right. Like I thought they were introducing him to the organization because if Tampa were to buy him out, then he would be a free agent as yes. well. So Tampa would get the benefit of the the buyout savings and then he'd be free to sign with whatever team he wants and that team could be Toronto. So so if he or went whoever. he went to the Marlies, right? Yes. And then he went back to the Preds. So here, do you have it in no, he's just alone. He they was don't loaned. they don't have the the loan transaction on Cap Friendly. Like it wasn't. Yeah, you can. Not, you can be. Filed. Toronto's had a few people loaned. Uh, they they are one of the teams oh, that yeah. uses the loans the the most. Well, and right. they also use this buyout. They did it with Jared Cowan. Right. Remember that they acquired him. He thought he was going to be a Leaf supposedly, 
Um, they were dinged one year. They bought them out and they, they got relief the next. They, oh God, I'm trying to remember the name of the player they did this with. They also traded Matt Fratton to the Sens and the Sens were like, but no, no, keep him. So I they, remember that was in the uh, 16. Yeah. 15, yeah. And I remember 16. that, that one. So what happened there <laughs> was basically if the Sens wanted to call him up, they could. Mm hmm. But they're like, no, 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 stay in Toronto with the Marlies. So he just continued playing. Oh, but he was Marlies. property of the Sens, yeah. Yeah, I want to say he was still part of uh, that 2016 team that went to the conference final in the A. They were yeah. a good team, Adam. What's on your phone? No, I'm just, I was looking up something. Um, I keep, oh, I just keep thinking there's going to be a train. No, nothing, oh. nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah. Um, I, I keep thinking about, so we're focused on Philippe Myers right now, which is hilarious. Sorry. Know, well, it's a fun little... It is a fun little thing. Little tidbit that the NHL, because the NHL's got so many stupid rules. It does. <laughs> uh, well, we, could, we could simplify this, but why? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> why is that a thing? Well, right. why yeah. do you get cap relief for buying someone out? That flies directly in the face of the hard cap. The whole point is to stop teams from spending. This is incentivizing spending. I think there needs to be an emphasis on how goofy this is. It that, is goofy. That Julian Brisewa has his staff, his, his Brandon Pridham uh, equivalent, looking into this, and they're like, okay, if we get this guy and then we send McDonough, we're going to get a credit. And like that's that shouldn't be how the cap works. Yeah. And the Leafs blogs, give them credit, like Leafs Nation stuff, they were all over this. Like, they were all over the Philip Myers thing for a while. And like, the Leafs should do this, the Leafs should do this. Now... I, I want to say this. Ryan McDonough was an absolute warrior for the Lightning for a long, long time. Yep. Long time. After I think he was part of the St. Louis deal, was he not? Scott Gomez. Scott. No, well, that was Scott Gomez. Oh, wait. No, sorry. That um, was that was to, between New York and Montreal, but I yes. think McDonough is what went the other way in the St. Louis deal. I honestly don't remember. No. No? Was it a first round <clears throat> pick? Who went the other way? I think no. Jesse so has. So the, uh, the Montreal Canadiens. I'm not talking about Montreal. I'm talking about New York. Do, I, was, I was gonna do his okay. whole trade. History. Okay, all right, all right. So the Montreal Canadiens traded Scott Gomez, oh. uh, Tom Payette, mm -hmm. and uh, Michael Busto to the Rangers. Oh. Uh, well, they acquired those players from the Rangers in exchange for Ryan McDonough, Chris Higgins, Doug Yannick, and Pavel Velatenko. And then the Rangers traded Ryan McDonough and JT Miller in Whoa. exchange for Vlad Domestikov. Bright Howden, uh, Libor Hayek, yep. a first, a second, <coughs> and then there were some conditions on the uh, second round pick. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. And that was... Massive trade. Wow. Well, and it was integral to Tampa winning their back-to-back -back cups because yes. they, they kept McDonough. They were able to trade Miller for uh, that Vancouver first, and I believe like a bunch of those uh, prospects listed there at least one of them was used um, in loading up for 2020 and 2021. So it was Ryan Callahan. That's who I got mixed up with, Ryan McDonough. Ryan Callahan, ah. who was also a good player for the Lightning for a while. That was a weird deal. Uh, for the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, when, when St. Louis got mad at Iserman and said, I'm out of here. That was a long time ago. I, I still think... <laughs> I still think that was a pissy move, but that's just, I said it at the time. I still don't think it's pissy, but regardless well, of that. He was left off the Olympic team after leading the league in scoring. And that's your GM who's in charge of picking the team. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> pissy. I get anyway, it. Ryan McDonough, um, he's been a very, very good player for Tampa for a long, long time. One of the unsung heroes because the team is loaded with superstars. But man, what do we always say about cup winning teams? Even though they didn't win the cup this year, they still won two in a row. What do we always say? Why does someone keep letting them off the hook? Stop helping them. Dom decision. Ryan McDonough has been excellent defensively for Tampa Bay, but at age 33, four years remaining on his deal, things are looking dicey. He said the Lightning get out of this deal just in time. And I forgot that there are four more years left on this deal, mm -hmm. paying him $6.8 million a season. This deal is why the hard cap sucks. So forget the fact that one of the best teams in the league has to deal one of their integral pieces. Um, to continue being competitive. We're all looking at Ryan McDonough get traded for Philippe Myers, who may or may not, like we're cheering for whether or not he's going to get bought it out. It just boo, it makes the trade suck. Like trades are exciting and, in other leagues, right? And a guy named Grant Mismash, I don't know. Made up name. Who that is. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at that deal of Ryan McDonough essentially being traded for two randoms. And we're like, Tampa did it again. 
That was a great move. Great move. It's stupid that it's a great move. It's a boring they ass gave, thing. They gave away this player because they don't have room for him, and they have Sergachev, who's just going to step in and be fine. No, I know, but it's stupid that Tampa is trading away the far and away better player in the trade, and we're like, brilliant move for Tampa. But that it would they, be nice. That, what Steve is steal. saying is it'd be nice to trade talent for talent. Yes. Or talent for huge amounts of draft picks. No, because like the, you see in the NBA and NFL. The contract uh, is the contract's too much, you know? They yeah, because the hard cap and it doesn't go up also. I'm wondering what Nashville's thinking on the other side in that. Holy shit, we got Ryan McDonough. But they also had, is Roman Yossi going to continue to miss time? Well, that that could be the case, but also uh, they've always been b- proponents of big, big time defense. Yeah. That too. Those teams were always built around their top four. It's a copycat league. Yeah. It's a copycat league, and I think more and more teams, and the Preds would be justified in doing this. More and more teams are looking at the NHL season before Christmas and going, "Who cares? Who cares if you're back by Christmas?" Fine. If you're back by the trade deadline, whatever. I don't care. Are you going to be back by April? Tampa, uh, uh, sorry, not Tampa. Nashville didn't lose anybody, right? They didn't sure. lose anybody. They didn't get worse. Like, it, let's say McDonough were to be injured, right? They still didn't get worse. They traded away two guys they weren't using. It's essentially Ryan a McDonough. free agent signing of Ryan McDonough Kinda. for four years for six point seven five million dollars. Kinda. I probably wouldn't. Is that his? Is that what he's worth? Would you get if, if on the open market? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, but if you're Nashville, is that where you're going after when you already have two defensemen who are probably your like I don't know top four defensemen who are already thirty two and thirty three in I, I uh, get Yossi and Matthias Eckholm. I get what you're saying. Uh, because like in a few years, that's going to, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Right. The three of them in a few years, it could be really bad. However, Nashville wants to win a cup next year. And four years from now sounds like four years from now's problem. Mark Bergevin, when he signed Josh Anderson, we all looked at that and went, holy shit, seven years. That's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be someone else's nightmare. But then they went to the cup final in the first year. Yeah. Right? right. Like, no, someone else will figure it out. And Kent Hughes will have to do that. There was a game in the conference final where Montreal won 2 1 and he scored both goals. You know what I mean? Like, do you think Bergevin regrets that at all? And now he's not even there. Yeah. So he doesn't <laughs> give a shit. Like, how long does David Poyle have left in this league? He's right, got to be right. one of the oldest GMs. Yeah. Yeah. One more time. I just, I just think, like, like, God willing, we're sitting here in 2025, still doing this podcast, and it's September of 2025. We're going to be looking at the National Predators roster and we're going to say, oh, they have Roman Yossi for $9 million. They have Ryan McDonough for $6 million and they have Matthias Ekholm for $6.2 million. Oh, and, and, and going into that look season, at their forwards. who else will they have? They'll know that the Matt Duchesne contract will still have one more year at eight million. Wow! Ryan Johansson will be expired. Uh, Granlin will be expired. So that's oh, that's okay. okay. All the right, forward all group right. will need a refresh, but those three on defense will all still be there in twenty twenty five. It's, but I just think as it's a you shame. said, it's a great argument that who cares? Yeah. Let's try and win. <laughs> it's a it's a shame that a player who is still a good player, he's still an effective player, and he's been to the Stanley Cup final four times. We're looking at that and going, I don't know what Nashville's thinking. <laughs> uh, that doesn't like it's it's just so counterintuitive to sports. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, Nashville didn't do very well in the playoffs this year, and we all know why. They played the team that ended up winning the Stanley Cup and got run the fuck over with no goalie. The goalie. That's why. The answer was not Connor Ingram. Apparently, yeah, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> they had probably the third best goalie in the whole league. If you throw. Yeah. Oh, Saros? Yeah. yeah you I was see like, Sor- Ingram. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Igor's, uh, UC Saros is probably um, third best goalie last season, you know, and he didn't get to play. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking shame. Who knows what they could have been. 